Lal Bahadur Shastri, India's Prime Minister. On his first visit to Britain in December 1964, this is what he had to say about Kashmir. Well, the question of uh, Kashmir takes a second place. What is more important is that India and Pakistan should live peacefully and should have better relationship between the two countries. That hope of Shastri's was shattered three weeks ago when guerrillas started widespread attacks in Indian Kashmir, burning houses and shooting up villages. The Vale of Kashmir, once a favorite resort of the English in India, they came here to escape the heat of the plains, to play polo and fish and enjoy the lakes like the famous Shalimar, was no longer a paradise on earth, but a place of bitterness and desolation. The Indians say the 4,000 guerrillas are Pakistani-led. The Pakistanis claim that they're Kashmiri nationalists in rebellion against Indian rule. But allowing for propaganda from both sides, it seems clear that the tribesmen and Pakistani regulars have been crossing the ceasefire line for the past three weeks. And recently, regular troops from both sides have been in action. The Indians say that 300 of the infiltrators are still at large. They claim to have killed 1,000. The other side also claims big kills. Yesterday in the Indian Parliament, Mr Shastri said that if necessary, India would send troops across the ceasefire line to attack the bases from which the infiltrators were operating. Today came the news that Indian troops had crossed the line and set up posts on the other side. Meanwhile, the Indians have a large part of their 50,000 troops in Kashmir searching the rugged border area. Kashmir is the most northerly of India's states, strategically placed where China, Pakistan and India meet. The northern part is under Pakistan control, while India controls the area south of the ceasefire line. Nehru once promised a plebiscite in Kashmir. John Edwards asked the chief minister, Mr. Sadiq, what the position is today. So far as uh, Kashmir is concerned, as a part of India, I don't think it is negotiable with Pakistan or with any other power in the world. It is a part of India as good part of India as any other state of India is. And therefore no question of negotiating. Do you see this now as a, a continuing threat from Pakistan or was this just one adventure? This uh, will depend on how we meet it. If we give a fitting reply and we give a crashing defeat to them and make it impossible for Pakistan from time to time to disturb our peaceful life, then I don't think it will be a continuity. Although Indian troops are fully alerted now and apparently getting the better of the battle, they seem to have been surprised when the first attack started at the beginning of August. Then infiltrators probed across the ceasefire line right into the capital, Srinagar, and attacked villages right outside it. Apparently they were going for the airport, which is the communications nerve center of Kashmir. Off ...and the Indian forces quickly gained general control of the situation, although the small force of guerrillas is still carrying out hit-and-run raids under the noses of the Indian troops. Yesterday, Indian forces killed seven guerrillas in scattered clashes. They also made their biggest haul of arms yet. It included rockets, 20,000 rounds of ammunition and machine guns. Whether the dead guerrillas are nationalist rebels or Pakistani regulars, one thing is certain.
Pakistan and its president, Ayub Khan, who so far denied all connection with the fighting, cannot be happy with the way things are going. Kashmir is a mainly Muslim country and has many ties with Pakistan. All this could mean that political pressure is building up on President Ayub Khan to take action. Despite the fighting round it and one or two attacks actually inside it, Srinigar looks remarkably peaceful. But the houseboats on the river are empty and most of them seem to be to let. The Indian authorities have clamped a curfew on their territory and checkpoints have been set up on main roads leading into the capital. Nothing is left to chance, although the Indians claim that the infiltrators are clearly distinguishable from the local Kashmiris. John Edwards talked to Mr. Ghulam Kara of the Opposition Action Committee. Have you any views on the way the Indian Army has acted in this present situation? Indian Army at certain places has acted very badly against the population of this place. The people say that at certain places it was Indian Army which set fire to certain villages. Although they say there were no infiltrators in those areas. Do you actually believe uh, in the Indian claim that Pakistan has brought infiltrators into Kashmir? I can't say anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Would, would uh, our sources are only two, either the Pakistan radio or the Indian radio. Pakistan radio says, no, we have nothing to do with it. Indian radio says, no, it is Pakistan. It's welcome. Do you believe either of those versions? I, 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 we can't say anything about their words. They have been contradicting each other for the last so many years about these border skirmishes, particularly when there used to be this, uh, when they used to say that there has been some uh, this ceasefire violation, there used to be different versions. And we have never been able to see which is the correct version. Why has India, do you think, refused a plebiscite in Kashmir? It is uh, this question you should put to India. I can't say. But I can tell you that for the last 18 years it has been uh, put in the cold storage. Why don't people here then like India? Because they have not been able to rule properly. That is the, uh, that is the main reason. And that, that has been admitted even by very big Indians, very great Indians who are in, uh, at the helm of the affairs. What has gone, what has been the main objections to Indian rule here? The main objection has been that they have been not ruling it in a democratic way. For the last 18 years we have seen no democracy in Kashmir. How have the Indians been treating the local population in Kashmir? At this time? At this time, they are practically treating us as Algerians were treated by, by, by French. Minus the fact that we are not behaving like Algerians. We want that this issue, Kashmir issue, should be solved in a non-violent, non-communal manner and in a peaceful way. The United Nations have the thankless task of trying to hold the ring. They have no forces here, only 45 officer observers. Their job is to investigate complaints, and this year they've been getting more than ever before. More in one month than in many previous complete years. But they can't take action, only report back to Secretary General Utant in New York. Does today's news of India's moves across the ceasefire line mean the UN will soon be engaged in yet another major peacekeeping operation, like Cyprus and the Congo? Or will the two sides move back in time from the brink of war?